Okay, we're going to start a spreadsheet uh, regarding uh, doing uh, ha having something to do with um, having something to do with exponential uh, trends uh, using a finite difference table. So let's do this for let's do this for eleven, and notice we're going from zero to ten. And of course, we're going to figure out the number three, just because it's a arbitrary number, raised to an exponent. Now that three raised to the power, as it says A1 on the spreadsheet, that means I'm raising it to the power zero. I could have done this too. I could have done that. I would have got the same answer. So uh, I'm just clicking on here, and that'll be my now I'm going to now fill this with fill this column with powers of three. Notice that uh, what we really have here, three to the a four column a row four uh, is three to the power of three, which is twenty seven. Three to the power of four is eighty one. Three to the power of five is two hundred forty three. And eventually we get the 3 to the power 10, which is 59,049. Now, let's do a finite difference table like you would in, in um, polynomials, when you take up polynomials. So we're just finding the difference between 3 minus 1. So 3 minus 1 should be 2, right? So it is. Now, 9 minus 3 should be 6. So there we go. 27 minus 9. Well, it looks like 18 to me, I think. That would be 18. 81 minus 27 is 54, and so on. We could keep going all the way down, except there's something weird about these numbers. Um, if you divide all these numbers by 2, you get this. Divide all the numbers by 2, you get 1, you get 3, 9, 27. Does that look kind of strangely familiar? It should be because this it's this exact row going down to here. It's actually the same column. We're reproducing the same column except we just happen to be dividing by 2. That's a really weird feature of exponential functions. So that means that if we find the first difference of these numbers, well, I mean, you could probably guess it'll have to do with powers of 3 all over again. So take away this. Let's see what we get. We have 4. Okay, that's interesting. So then for this row, well, for this cell, we'll take this, take away this. Sorry, hold on. It's this. Oh, oh, oh. No, that's not what I wanted. This, take away this. Okay. 18 take away 6 should be 12, right? Okay, so how about this? 54 take away 18. Hmm. Sounds like 36. Okay. 162 minus 54. Okay, that sounds like 108. And okay, so then we, we can just keep going on this. And notice that, um, okay, these numbers do look a little weird, but the first three, and possibly all of them, look like they're divisible by four. Let's see if it's true. So this divided by four, and let's just divide the whole column by four. And notice that we get these numbers all over again down to here. Okay, so... This looks like, I mean, the numbers, the trends in the numbers aren't changing. The only thing that's changed is that this is the powers of 3 multiplied by 2, and these are the powers of 3 multiplied by 4. That's about the only thing that's changing. It's likely that the next one will be powers of 3 multiplied by, I don't know, 8 or maybe 6. Well... It sounds like it's powers of 3 multiplied by powers of 2, which would be kind of neat if that were true. 
Well, let's see if it is. The third differences are 12 minus 4. And you get this 8. Oh, already we're off to a rocky start with uh, sixes. So it looks like these are powers of 3 divisible by 8. Well, let's see if it's true. So equal sign this divided by 8. And if we get that, we get the 1, we get the 3. I guess the next one's going to be 9, and then 27. It looks like powers of 3 all over again. So it looks like, for all we can tell, these numbers are powers of 2 multiplied by powers of 3 in the first differences. Which is kind of weird, but true. And the powers of 2 are going up, meaning that the differences are not decreasing, they're increasing. The first differences start at 2, and the first one here starts at 4, the th first one here starts at 8, and 24 minus 8 is 16, so the first number here will be 16 if we had the nerve to do it. And we could be doing this if this, if this set of numbers went down for a thousand numbers, you could go for a thousand columns and never come to the end of it. So there's something about... Um, there's something about these powers that um, that have basically a problem with finite difference tables. Uh, it gets worse if they're powers of two. If they're powers of two, because as you know, powers of three multiplied by powers of two made up this finite difference table. What about powers of two themselves? It turns out that if we do those, well, 2 to the 10 is 1,024. Let's go equals this, subtract this. This gets weirder than the 3. Notice this column is an exact copy of this column, meaning that every finite difference of powers of 2, no matter, you can go for n finite differences and you will always get nothing more and nothing less than powers of 2. We can go again, but you can see that because these are the same sequence of numbers, you're going to get the same sequence of numbers as up here. So it's not worth trying. However, let's go back to 3s again. The idea of 3s tell you something about, okay, not 3s, but anything that's not a 2. A 2 is... Um, too low a number to worry about and has lots of properties about it, but three few people talk about and uh, it's interesting simply because I just want to just talk about um, I just want to talk about uh, exponents and exponential functions and exponential sequences without having to go mucking about in the uniqueness of powers of two. Here, well three is just a three. It's a low number uh, but it also has the ability of not being so nicely predictable as powers of 2. So instead of finite differences, you'll find that it is a lot better to do finite ratios. So we take these and divide. We divide the higher number by the lower number. And you get 3. Well... Notice 9 divided by 3 is 3. 27 divided by 9 is 3. So like finite differences, finite ratios ought to be all the same for exponential functions. They ought to all be the same. <coughs> so if you know that a function is exponential, you can test using its finite, ra uh, finite ratios, not just finite differences. But the finite ratio also tells you it appears the base of the function. But hold on a minute. What if I did something kind of sneaky? What if I did, okay, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to get rid of all these threes. And I'm going to multiply this number by, say, 2.57 multiplied by this exponential piece here. Okay? And I'm going to do that. Okay. So these are decimals now, and we seem to get some really big numbers. But do we still get 3 when we divide? So this is the thing. 
So equal sign this divided by this, and look at what we get. Bang on, exactly three. Exactly three. So equal sign this divided by this. Boom, exactly three. This divided by this. Boom. And it turns out that we have threes all the way down. Even for these two numbers, 150,755.93 divided by 50,585.31 is still exactly three. So even when you have a number in front that's uh, a funny number, hmm. What if we have a k value? I'm going to really start messing with this. Now, okay, hold on a second. What if we have a k value? So, you know what? I'm going to get rid of these. Not that I need to, but... So what if I have a k value? So let's say a k value. Say, say... 3.1 multiplied by a1 and I got to close my bracket here because I got a double bracket so it's 3 to the power of 3 3.1 times a1 a1 is like our x and 3.1 is like our k it's like our it's like our compression factor do those ratios still work do we still get do we at least still get a finite ratio um, regardless. So once again, 2.57, and then things get pretty big. Oh, we get all the way to 10 to the 15. I guess my prediction is it's not going to be a ratio of 3 this time. But will the finite ratio still be the same number? Let's try it out, because it looks definitely looks like 77 is many more you know it is it is a greater than three multiple of 2.57 so but let's see uh 77 divided by 2.57 it's 30.13 okay so that that's the finite ratio is it the same every time it certainly is you can see here i divide 70,333 divided by 2,333 point whatever and i get the same ratio as everywhere else um, so if I keep going down like this, just drag my mouse down, uh, it's the same ratio all the way down. So now that you start doing transformations and stuff like that, uh, even if I did plus, per, how about minus, huh, minus five, okay. Then you get a really small number, but you should end up with a really big number. So I go all the way down with this. I end up with a really big number. It appears as though the ratio did not change because of, because of the right to left shift. What about um, adding adding two okay let's add two let's go all the way down and and basically we're adding two we're adding two what to what the uh, functions were and notice that um, the two was larger in proportion to the earlier numbers but starts losing its proportion as the number gets really really big to the point where you're roughly at 30.135 by the end. You're, in other words, that the ratio seems to tend towards 30.135. Well, that's kind of interesting. At any rate, that's uh, what I've got uh, for today. And uh, really, uh, as you can see, the finite difference tables uh, don't work for exponential functions. What you really need are um, really finite ratio tables, if you will. At any rate, this last demonstration was not really, you know, was really more my curiosity than anything. So if we don't have the two there, we go back to having the ratios we had before. So this looks good, and I think we'll stop here.